Hey, I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And thanks for tuning in for another Research Friday. And today, what we're going to be covering is a research article, and if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. What is today, man? Um, I don't know. It's Cuboid Day. Cuboid Day. Cuboid Day. Oh my gosh, I'm today, ready for Cuboid Day. we're talking about Cuboid Syndrome. Um, Cuboid Syndrome. All I know about cuboid is it's like shaped like a cuboid. I don't know if that explains it or not. Well, actually, it does from, but, an, yeah. anat from an anatomical point of and view. And the only time I can find out what's mm -hmm. a cuboid in the in the body from my old anatomy days is the foot. Um, well, it's considering it's the only place it's at. Yeah. All yeah. right. Good. But this is a good one, and the reason why I like it is you know I had a personal experience with this. My son came home with what was cuboid syndrome. Okay. He was complaining about his foot, and he usually does this. Uh, we, we go to put him into bed, mm -hmm. and that's usually when he goes into patient mode of, oh, of hey, course, can yeah. I have you look at something? Of course. And, you know, I'm off the clock, and it's 9 o'clock at night. Brain's not even. And I'm not even present, and so mm -hmm. I don't deliver the best care to, mm -hmm. to the family. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I obliged, and I look at it, and he had the true classic findings of cuboid syndrome. I mean. So what. Okay, first of all, let's start out with where is the cuboid? Yeah, cuboid. Actually, if you can untie your shoes, if I can borrow your foot real quick, sure. we'll, we'll show sure. this to I'll do that. what we're talking about. Which one would you like? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go with this one to start right. off with. Okay, good. Um, we'll go with that one. I mean, really, when you're looking at this, we're talking about the lateral aspect of the foot, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So you got navicular on the on the inside. We're talking about the lateral aspect, and we're talking about you know distal and inferior to the so this malleolus. Bump, so, so this we're talking about thing. right through here, correct, Okay, is what we're dealing with. Okay. And, you know, when we go back to the anatomy, you're, mm -hmm. the, you're the guru. All I remember is we've got peroneus longus that comes down and wraps yes, right around that, and it, it. kind of aids in that support, mm -hmm. helps evert mm -hmm. the cuboid itself. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we look at some of these, we, we know that the peroneus longus is a prime... Um, component Very to this, so. mm -hmm. but what other factors would we see with individuals who might present with cuboid syndrome? Well, you could have pain on the outside of the foot, yep. of course, with walking, with standing. Yeah, you some pain. Okay. You've also got a sural nerve that runs down the backside and runs out the outside of this leg, so you can have a sural nerve trap. You can have some burning numbness on the outside of their foot. Um, you could also, you know, let's be honest, if you have an inversion sprain, twist the ankle, you're going you're gonna to engage yeah. the peroneals. Um, and so you can have all types of issues right through there. Yeah, and his was nice and red and inflamed. I mean, you could see the swelling that existed over it. Okay. Um, so it was classic finding. And we typically, in the studies show, and especially in this article examining the mm -hmm. in treatment mm -hmm. of cuboid syndrome, mm -hmm. you see, I think it was 80% of yeah. folks who had cuboid syndrome also had pronated feet. Yeah. Now you've seen the video of my son doing a squat. Oh. That boy has got some that pronated boy's feet. That got some stretchy. Yeah. He's got really pronated uh -huh. feet. I mean, he bounces down like yeah. Gumby yep. and then bounces right back up. Mm -hmm. And that's where he gets it. He got mm -hmm. it from his over excessive pronation, just started irritating pronius longus yep. and started irritating the cuboid. Um, so, so, okay, a patient comes in, they got pain on the outside of their foot. Um, yeah. I look at it, I go, okay, I don't think it's sural nerve entrapment. I don't have an inversion sprain, so I don't think it's a sprained ankle. How do you evaluate for this thing? How do you test it? There's three really good tests. Right. Number one, they call it a shear test. Okay. You take your thumb on that cuboid, and you pretty much are attempting to push that into the other tarsals because rigidity up through the tarsals will also mm -hmm. be a precursor mm -hmm. for this. And so you take your thumb and you push upward into it. So you're trying to shear the cuboid. It will be painful. It will be, uh, it will wake yeah. you up. The other, they call it a supination. And so you either distract or you, you support the calcaneus. Okay. And the goal is you want to go upward. So if I see the other one, we'll make a sure. little bit more sense of it. If I grab the cuboid, I'm trying to distract the calcaneus this way. So I'm going to grab the calcaneus, sorry. Okay. And I'm going to distract this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a supination. So if we can see what happens, so I, distract this I way support calcaneus to the joint. Exactly. I'm going to supinate them, and I'm going to grind that joint, kind of like what we do up in the shoulder when we're testing yep. for labrums. Yep. I need to borrow your foot again. Yeah, borrow my foot. Excellent. Um, and so we're going to do a supination test. Okay. The other, they call it an adduction test. 
which is kind of confusing because adduction, I typically look at something going yeah, across going the body. Okay. If mm -hmm. you really look at, I'm trying to separate. That's what I would like to call it to patients. Okay. I'm trying to separate. I'm going to support calcaneus again, grab midfoot, the fifth med head. but now I'm going to actually try to pull my hands away from each other. Well, and, then, and in that case, when you pull it apart with the peroneus, you're going to you're going to engage yeah. and it's going to be painful and especially when you twist. Yeah. Woo. Okay. And okay. it will be painful here. Oh, it'll be. Now the article goes over a really good treatment for that yes. cuboid. We're not going to cover that. If you want to see that treatment, make sure to take a look at the article and read through yep. it. Uh, very, very effective. Now that treatment, when they actually do it, it's kind of a mobilization maneuver. Yes. Yes. And they'll get a, what we talk about in school or, or, or some medical terms, a cavitation or a pop. Yeah, pop. Mm -hmm. um, and, and looking into the what they mentioned, that pop isn't joint noise. Mm -mm. It's actually a component of the labrum that sits in between the two. Yep, between the talus and the cuboid. Yeah, which was really interesting. You're actually, there's a little labrum or connective yep. tissue there that you're, you're affecting. Yep. Um, but when we would look at treatment, what are some of the best ways to treat this? You can manage this conservatively, as the article is saying. You yeah. can manage it conservatively. And so if we know there's a problem there, what are some things that we need to do? Number one, we need to avoid um, severe weight-bearing activity. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you need to put them in a crutch or a boot. If they're sport-dependent, yep. you might have to reduce that sport for a while okay. until it resolves, um, especially those that are runners. Yes. You got to cut it down. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And then you take a look at taping. They have some really good taping maneuvers oh, for some this. Really cool taping maneuvers. Whether you support this. the peroneus. Yep. Whether you actually, if they're a pronated person, if you do a medial heel lock and you put them mm -hmm. into a mm -hmm. supinated position, mm -hmm. or you just do decompression over the cuboid, you mm -hmm. can get kind of fancy with all the various taping maneuvers that are out there, but you can tape this as an effective treatment. Okay. And then the mobilization, manipulation of the actual joint itself. Okay. Um, okay. can help and then rehab rehab and supporting the area you might need to put this person in a short-term orthotic yes um, or a or a pad for that area yep. but yep. otherwise rehab more specifically peroneal peroneus if we okay. get peroneus and we can get the intrinsics of the foot such as short arc exercises which we'll go over in another okay. uh, research Friday yep. um, that is helpful for this condition all right perfect my son responded really well to treatment. Mm -hmm. um, he did not like the actual treatment of the cuboid. Oh, um, I remember you did that on, how shall we say, a quite uh, large gentleman. Yeah, it, and it's... he... I thought he was going to arrest me. Oh, I did yeah. too. I thought he was going <laughs> to take you, take you out, man. But, um, but loved it after that and never yeah. had another problem. Effective treatment. Very effective. But this is a diagnosis that is often overlooked. It's very overlooked. Um, because we get shortchanged when we look at the plantar. So uh -huh. cuboid syndrome important to look at, important to consider in your diagnoses when you're dealing with lateral foot pain or you have inflammatory responses yeah, in that yep. area. Yep, yep, you so, got it. All right. Foot intrinsics, peroneal stabilization, taping, mobilization, manual therapy combined with rehab yep. and taping, very effective for cuboid syndrome. Imagine that, imagine yeah. that. Simple. All right, perfect. I'm All Dr. Right. Mall. I'm Dr. Chris. And we'll see you next Friday. See you next Thanks Friday. Thanks for tuning in.